Popale ne mimosa. I think that's how you say it. Grateful to be alive. Grateful to have wrinkles. To have a pulse. Praise the Lord. I forgot to contour. All right, let's talk three ways to use setting powders because I understand that you may not really know how you can make these powders work for you. I'm gonna use two different powders. One is the Sephora Translucent Powder and then this one is obviously a luxury powder. This is a Givenchy Prisma Libre and the shade is five. Popaline Mimosa. I think that's how you say it. Okay, they're gonna serve two different purposes. Let's go over what those are. Now to explain, yes, I have done my skincare routine. So the skincare routine is absolutely a standalone task outside of your actual makeup. So don't feel like if you're gonna do this powder routine, then you're not gonna do your skincare. Do your skincare, you may notice that my skin is very dewy and hydrated. I love for my skin to look just like this on my bare skin before I move into the actual makeup application. So it should, if you like to do my kind of routine, look like this, even though you're going to put powder and makeup on top, okay? It's, it's just all gonna look so, so good. All right, so first way to use the setting powder is to apply it to the face before your actual foundation. So I'm gonna use this Sephora 99 brush and take the Sephora translucent powder. Any powder that's translucent will work best in this step to apply, like I said, the setting powder onto the skin before you actually put on your foundation. So we're gonna apply this on the face before I do my makeup and I'm gonna take it from the actual container like so and I'm picking up an ample amount. Pick a powder that's translucent. How you know that it's translucent? Well, first of all, it will say that it's translucent. And second of all, it's really trial and error because there are some powders that are absolutely white like the inside of this cap that when you put on your face, melt in and you don't see anything. I'm just putting some in the cap in case I need some more. And then there are some that are absolutely white like snow and when you apply it to your face, you can see the white cast. This powder is more on the beige side and there's no white cast left over. And let me just show you. So when I apply this, I apply it to my T-zone because if I'm going to apply, and I tapped off the excess, powder to my face before foundation, I only want it to be in the areas where I get oily. I'm not gonna put this all over my entire face. It'll make me feel stiff. It'll make me feel hard. It'll make me feel dry. And that is not how I want to look. Now, if you want that, you want to mattify your entire face, I mean, the perimeter and everything, then do just that. You got to do what works best for you. I'm going to put this over my eyelids, as you can see, because I don't want that to be oily. And I also don't want my eyebrows to be oily. I used to skip this. And then when I get to the eyebrow part, it was like the brow pencil was sliding too much. I don't like all that. I like for my brow to be dry as possible. This is not a foolproof step where when you do it, then your face is absolutely unequivocally not going to get oily. That is not the case, but it's going to help, okay? It's going to help. So here, we used this powder and now my T-zone is dry, okay? Now we're gonna speed this up and move into the foundation. And then when we get to the concealer, I'll show you who set that, okay? Okay, now we are at the point where I'm going to set my highlighted areas. And what that means is essentially just taking away the shine and helping it to not separate, all right? So what I do is I'll take this Real Techniques brush, just any brush that looks like this really works for me. And then I take some of the translucent powder and I will make sure that there's no creasing right here, which is my problem area, you know, fine lines, maturity, grateful to be alive, grateful to have wrinkles because I have a pulse, praise the Lord. And we're gonna set this right here with this powder because I'm not trying to add any color. I simply want to set this part, okay? I want to really pay attention. <laughs> Keep your eyes looking like this because you want to really get up in there, okay? And set this part right here, which is my problem area. I don't want that to crease, okay? And then normally at this point is where I go in with a different setting powder. This is the Glowish setting powder by Huda Beauty. This is the medium tan luminous one. I'm not going to use this one today in this demonstration because I realize that not everyone's going to do this. I want to do something that is more, that you're more apt to do, you feel me? So I would now go in with this and then set all of the highlighted areas under my eyes and then do something different around the other parts of my face. But let's keep this simple. This is where I would use the Givenchy one, okay? And this is, like I said, the number five one. I love this because it's got four quadrants and it's a light yellow beige -y type of shade. And the same brush, I love this one from Sephora because of the angle of it, almost like a diamond tip, but not, it's a rounded diamond tip, I, I suppose you would call it. And I'm gonna take some of this product, put some in the cap because a lot does come out. Tap off the excess, okay? And now we're going to really set in color correct because it's this light beige type color. 
Now, if this is confusing to you, you can just literally use a light powder foundation or you can definitely just go in with the same Sephora translucent powder. So you don't have to have two different shades of powders to do this setting, okay? We're just here focusing on where you're going to put the powder again if you wanted to put powder on your face again, okay? I would apply it to my highlighted areas. So I'm just going on the side of my nose and what I like about this brush is because of the shape of it, it helps me to isolate out the nose. I have not, I forgot to contour. Ah! Let me contour and come right back. Oh my God. And we're back. Okay. We have contour. Contour is very important. Okay. So yes, back to the Givenchy powder. Some is on this 99 brush and then we're going to go down in a V check mark type motion and bring it right up here to follow along the line where we have the contour. You feel me? This is not going to add much color as you can see. It really is just going to set it and brighten it a smidge, brighten it a smidge. And that's fine. I don't want to take this any lighter than it already is. Okay. And then the same powder and all the other areas, not taking too much of it. See, it's not even a lot, but just enough to set it a little bit, you know? Some of the same powder, tapping off the excess right here in the middle. I don't really focus too much on making sure that it goes in a straight line. The powder's not gonna provide that much color, so it's okay, in my case, to just go like this, you feel me? You can still see my nose contour. And then with what is left over, I'm going back over this area because I wanna make sure that it is as dry as possible. So let's progress this face some more and then I'll show you a third way that you can use your setting powder. Step three, which is another way that you can apply your setting powder is to apply it after your face is done. So as you can see, we're finished. Same brush, 99 brush, and this is the translucent one, not the Givenchy. And I'm gonna take some of this powder and tap off the excess. And we're gonna go in the T-zone a smidge. I don't wanna take away the glowiness that I've added with the Milk Makeup Color Chalk, right? That was intentional, okay? But I do want to go in the areas where I normally will get oily all over again. At this point, we powdered three times. Well, four times if you include my face powder, but that's not what this video is about, okay? When it comes to the T-zone, we're gonna powder this now for the second time. I'm focusing just in certain areas because I added a highlight here because I want that to be there. My forehead is naturally highlighted. That's just naturally what happened thus far. But in some areas, like right here in the middle of the face, I don't necessarily want here to be oily. You feel me? So now this is just hand selecting the areas that I still want to be dry while allowing the perimeter of my face to be naturally dewy, naturally highlighted, naturally shiny. You understand? This obviously was applied, but this right here is natural. You feel me? So that's going to happen, especially when you do your skincare routine, right? But we're just doing a little bit of a touch up. You feel what I'm saying? Right here on the sides, I want the middle to be shiny as you can see, but right un underneath here, I don't want that area to be shiny. I want here to be shiny, just not right here. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope the three, three ways were helpful and edifying for you. Comment below and let me know if there are other ways that you use your setting powder. If you want more videos like this that are very specific on how to's, also comment and let me know. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.